up, get out right out of your bed, that's your quicksand. Getting rid anxiety in head, you can fix it. Rid of stigmas, all of them you said, we ain't listening. Just remember, try to do your best, you can win this. Maurice Bernard, state of mind. All right. Um, state of mind. How you guys doing? Guys and girls. Um, okay, today, if you like what you see, hit the button right here. Just hit that button like about 150 times. Ba 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 ba. Okay, today I have somebody who... I, I, I'm a fan of. Especially after what I saw last night. I even get a little teary-eyed right now, even thinking about it. I don't know. It's going to be one of those where I cry all the time. All right. It's all right to cry, man. Remember that. You guys cry, cry. Tears are your strength. Um, what happened was, I don't know why, but I, I, was, I guess I interviewed someone, and then this person's name kept came up and on Twitter it was like you gotta have you gotta have mom you gotta have mom you gotta have mom I'm like okay well, let me ask you know what I mean and so I asked he said yeah but you guys have so it's you guys really want this person you're gonna see who it is in two seconds uh he he was on one life to live for eight years playing an incredible role Todd Manning uh he's on young and the rest is playing Tucker McCall. I might have messed that one up. Tucker McCall. I'm bad with names. And he's just, and he has a movie. Um, and I thought I wrote it down, but I, we'll talk about it. This movie I saw that he directed, he starred, he wrote, is, I'm telling you, as good as it gets, this movie. As good as it gets. What's up, brother? Great. Right. How you doing, man? Um, well, to, to be honest with you, I'm a little uh, frightened. I, uh, well, I mean, I, I wanted to, to, to just be honest with you because, you know, what you're doing here um, is to um, kind of propagate the idea that, that it's okay to be vulnerable. Yeah. You know, and I, and I really have a, a fear of uh, public speaking. And I know this is, you know, there's wow. three of us. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm, I, I'm a little frightened. Wow. Yeah. I, but but I, the but fact that you're honest is amazing. Well, that's what I wanted. That's why I wanted to just yeah. say it outright, you yeah. know, because that's what we're, we're here yeah. for and what you're doing, which is why I, uh, I was really honored that you asked me. And because um, normally I, I avoid these kinds of things, even print. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, I avoided There's not a lot about you in what I researched. You're right. I, uh, I, I kind of avoided it. And because um, of this fear, um, you know, I, I, and I'm sure you can understand that the, the command you give yourself, be interesting. You know, I'm being interviewed. Be interesting. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so what happens is my, my mind rejects any direct command I give it. And so I, I always feel like I'm uh, monosyllabic and and eloquent and can't formulate my thoughts and you know that feeling. I, I know what you're talking about and the beauty of, of state of mind is that I just want you to be you yeah well, I want you to be scared yeah. I want you to be frightened yeah I want you to be happy uh, I don't I don't it, you know that to me is interesting yeah. like as a, as another actor too yeah. watching I don't I don't want somebody who's gonna not be honest or vulnerable that doesn't I'm not and in this room as you we go on, it's just you and me just getting to know each other. Yeah, it's not an interview. I look, I'm not. An, I'm not. I'm an actor, right? Yeah, but, yeah. But I knew that I could have a conversation with somebody because when I used to go on dates, I'm pretty good at mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. saying, "So, hey, where are you from?" You yeah, know, where yeah. are you? Uh, but I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Um, where are you from? Spokane, Washington. Spokane. Yeah. What is that like? Well, the area that I grew up in is it's beautiful. We look, uh, I grew up in rural uh, Spokane, surrounded by wheat fields, alfalfa. You know, wow. Um, 
you know, your closest neighbor is 300 yards away, and you know, my, my driveway was a quarter mile long, and Damn. yeah, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so it was a really idyllic uh, uh, upbringing, a lot of playing out outside. And, yeah, and, uh, throwing footballs. Oh, yeah, throwing footballs and baseballs and all sorts of stuff. And it's snowing in the winter. Oh, yeah, you got all four seasons there, intense seasons, you yeah. know, super hot summers and, and blanketed. Do you go back there a lot? I, I do. I try to go back. As my mother's still up there. Um, so we. I like to see her on holidays. And yeah. And things. I have some family in Seattle. So I, And it's a beautiful, just the Pacific Northwest is a, is a gorgeous. Have you ever been there? <sighs> I'm, I don't, I think so. I think so, yeah. But I don't, I, when I've done appearances, I go to places, but I don't really remember. Mm-hmm. And my memory's not too <laughs> I can't. I can't remember where I put my keys. Yeah, man. yeah. Um, and you got a, what I want. You got a jazz scholarship, what, right? What is that about? Well, I was always fascinated by drums, and um, the first time I, I went to see a, a, a jazz uh, combo live, I just couldn't take my eyes off the drummer. You know, and Buddy I, Rich. Oh yeah, of course. He's like the best, or not? Well, that's what I was told. I knew a friend. Who's, he might have the best. Technique, you might have the best chops. Yes. But jazz is a l- about a lot more than chops. It's about ah. self-expression. It's mostly about self-expression. And so there are, there are cats out there who I, I would prefer to listen to over Buddy. But, I mean, when you're talking about just flat-out uh, uh, facility on the instrument, yeah. yeah, it's Buddy. But there are a bunch, you know, guys like Elvin Jones, you know, Philly Joe Jones, and, and, and uh, Art Blakey. Those are those are my guys, you know. Are those drummers better than like who's the guy who look from? Was it uh, ACDC or one of those groups? Oh, Bonham. You're thinking of Bonham. Bonham. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's great. What's the difference? Well, the difference is just the the music. Okay. Um, but Bonham probably is is the greatest rock and roll drummer ever. Yeah. The the, the difference is is simply the genre you're in which you're uh, playing. Okay. Um, so you can't judge. This one to that one no. because it's different music. No, uh, um, and and to be perfectly honest, I mean most of the jazz players out there could play what Bonham's doing with one hand, just from a pure technical. Wow! Oh, jazz! I Bonham. know jazz is. Yeah, it's they're the best musicians in the world, for <sighs> sure. Uh, but that's really irrelevant because what he he got inside the John Bonham got inside the music, and he played the perfect he played the, everything perfectly relative to the music he was playing and nobody did it as good as him in that regard yeah yeah do you, you see the yeah. difference yeah 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 because yeah. i love like when they compare who's the greatest guitarist mm. it's you know uh jimmy hendrix jimmy. compared to whoever else clapton van halen or, yeah, yeah yeah and they judge those they always say jimmy is probably the number one but well, Clapton said so. Yeah, when he went to go see him. He went to go see him. <laughs> he went to he go said, see him. Um, yeah, his, his hand was shaking. <laughs> I don't know who he, who he was there with, with some other great guitarist. Yeah, who yeah, had told yeah. Him, who had told him, yeah, you got to, you, you, this guy, this guy Hendrix is good. You got to go check him out. So let's go check him out. And they checked him out. And apparently Clapton goes like this. He says, yeah, you told me he was good. You didn't tell me he was that good. Exactly. <laughs> he said, I don't want to play. I don't, right. I don't know if I would be able to play that good. Right. Um, so you did. Why didn't you pursue that? If you got a scholarship and everything. <laughs> I probably should have. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I guess it just felt like, because I was there for the music scholarship. And then I saw an audition for um, As You Like It, the Shakespeare play. I thought, you know, I've always felt like I could do it. I, I watched films. Really? Oh, yeah. I had a, I, I was, I don't know, maybe overly confident. No, I used to watch, I used to watch if movies, you know, when I was a kid with my dad. And, and I'd just be laying on the, on the floor like this watching the movies. And I'd say, and I'd say what are these actors doing? That's not how people behave. Oh. That's not how real people behave. These are the black and white movies. I mean, whatever. Whatever. It didn't yeah. matter. 
I mean, you know, except if I was watching Gene Hackman or Brandon yeah, or something like right, that. Right, right, right. But mostly I'd say, what, what are they doing? And I, but I wouldn't say, I, I'm going to go do it. I just said, ah. And how old were you? I don't know, I was eight, nine, you know, well, when I started to actually be able to, oh yeah, I just what? had this, I had this, I was just, I don't know if I was right or not, but I mean, I just felt like I could do it, but I never pursued it. I just had this sense about it. Um, so anyway, so I see this, audi- this audition, I said, ah, let me see if I can actually do it. And I got an audition and I got the lead and this, never done any Shakespeare. Never uh, really read any in, up until that point. So, and I got and and it just felt like I could really do it. Wow. Well, if that's not too. I just that's a, uh, an objective fact. That's how I felt. You know, I, don't know if I was right. Yeah. Or not, but I, and and I was a really good drummer. But I didn't have. You know what? You, what it requires to be a to be great is just the desire to to what they call. Uh, woodshed which means you you get in your room and you play and you play and you mm. play six eight hours i didn't have that yeah. discipline i wanted to go party i just heard about that too with somebody with the guitar that what you just said and acting doesn't require that no <laughs> there's a la- no you know, the, there's a laziness that's almost yeah. uh, a nice uh, thing yeah. to have as an actor yeah I and so i just didn't have that i felt like I, I've got the I've got the musicianship, but I but I w- didn't want to put the time in to get the the chops in order to express myself freely, where I could express myself freely like that as an actor. Son of a yeah. So once you got in, it w- you knew in your heart this is it. This is it. Yeah. yeah. Same with me, but yeah. I f- I was really bad in the beginning you know, oh. when I first started. I don't recall that in the book. We're, 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 we're oh, yeah, I wasn't good. Yeah, yeah. What happened was when I got into acting, I was in acting class. And it wasn't, but, I, but there was something, right? I had something. Yeah, and that's it, what everyone, because you would get feedback. Yeah, there, there, there was, say, there was something, but. And you were the most watchable. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right? Wasn't it watchable? Yeah. Yeah. But then I was in a mental institution. Right. So it was very difficult because in my hometown, everybody looked at me like, Tried to be a model. He's 5'9", and all the women are taller than he is. And he's yeah. not, he, I didn't make it as a model. It was very unsuccessful. Then I got into acting, so everybody's like, you know. And then I was in a men's institution. So I had to break out of that and continue to pursue because in my heart, I knew I was going to make it. Mm-hmm. Same with my mother. Mm-hmm. The only two people. Mm-hmm. Well, my best friend who was murdered. Mm-hmm. But he knew too. But it, but that's what kept me going. But it's not that I was. You seem to be right away a natural in a sense. Yeah. I wasn't a natural, but I knew if I worked hard enough. Right. Well, I'll tell you the the the, the I w- I remember the first time I saw you in General Hospital. Um, I was in my dressing room at One Life to Live, and I happened to switch it on. I was watching everything else, and you came on, and I'm. Whoa, this cat knows what's what. Yeah. That's my first, that was my first thought. This guy has got it. Whatever that is, he's got it. And I I took note right away, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, I really appreciated what you were doing. You know, because at that point, what happened with, with, uh, when I was on all my children and stuff, I kind of was just winging it, but Mm -hmm. was good, pretty good. At winging it yeah. and being, you know, because I had all this stuff inside, right? Yeah. And I was, but I'm going to tell you something, because we don't know each other. Yeah. I was having this conversation yesterday. My might as well have a conversation. Sure. It's taken me 15 years to lose the ugliness inside of me. Mm. The last two years, I've been free of it. Mm. So when I used to act, it wasn't easy, mm. ever. It was, like, really hard, because inside of, but it made for that kind of acting sure sure because my eyes are but i'm just like using all the ugliness yes and thank god i got a role that it I allows could, it you're right i wasn't playing the happy yeah i don't think i would have made it but yeah um you got one life yeah and from roger howard played todd manning right is roger still on yeah he's on yeah. the show yeah. good guy and that was a 
tough to do. See, I've never played anybody else. Mm -hmm. that, what do you think about before you get a role like that? Do you say to yourself, I got to go with a little bit of what he's doing or I'm just going to play it my way? The latter. Play it my way. Play it my way. <laughs> Use your darkness, your thing, and whatever. Yeah, absolutely. You, you're always who and what you are. You have to be just that. And so, um, did they ever t try to sway yes. you? Yes. Yes. In fact, uh, they uh, they had me. Um, they put me in a room with a bunch of tape of Rogers, and it wasn't because of Roger. I thought Roger was, was excellent, but they put me in and they said, you're here, watch, watch the character. And they pressed play and left me alone. I pressed stop and read a magazine <laughs> for the next hour. Or something. And then they'd come in, how was that? It's great. That's the best. I just totally ignored it. That's, I, 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 was, uh, yeah, yeah. I was never going to do that. No. It's absurd. No. So I just, I just now, you know, Lawrence Olivia has this great quote. My favorite quote is he says, don't, don't ask how you change because you're playing the character. Ask how the character changes now that you're playing it. Ah, that's great. And that's from, you know. That's great. I love that quote. The heavies. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of, I lived by that. And I just did it the, the way I wanted to do it. Uh, That's the way I've always. That was Frank the exec. No, no, he wasn't the exec. Yeah, yeah he was. Oh, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. till, wow. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, Frank and I are dead fourteen years now wow. together. Fourteen. It's years. like a, it's like a marriage. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so you did that for eight years. Seven years. Oh, seven exactly. years. Yeah. yeah. And how? I mean, did you? Did, did, when you left, did you love it? You, you, you had to at least like it in the beginning. How was it when you left? Uh, Bittersweet? I, yeah. I don't know how much. Your silence is great. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay. I love that. You know, I'll tell you. But the silence is great. Okay. I, no, no, what I, I just don't know how much to say. I, 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 I really appreciated what I learned, and, I, and the, 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 the biggest the most valuable thing I gained was some some friends who, who I have today, Michael Easton. Oh, Michael, one, yeah. Dan Gautier and, and uh, Kamar De Los Reyes. And, you know, yeah. Still keep in touch with uh, Kristen Alderson on occasion. Like she was here. Oh, was she? Yeah, like a, about two months ago. Oh, great. And uh, that was really what... But eight years is a, gr is a great... R uh, seven years oh, is a great run. Oh, yeah. Night. I was always, always appreciative and always felt fortunate that I had that gig, man. Because yeah. I knew there was hundreds of guys who would have taken it up just like that. And when did you do Biomed? Biodome? Biodome. Oh, that was in 1995. <laughs> I think 94, 95. Did you have an experience doing that or not? How do you like doing that? Um, yeah. Yeah, that because I had experience with I don't know if I, I played John Gotti and, I, and this producer, I talk about it a lot, maybe too much, but she was she really despised me. But yeah. I ended up, it, it's in my book, as you know, I ended up uh, having to just use how she felt about me to become uh, the character. That's great. So every day, when I wake up. I was going to be John Gotti, you know. I was just going to have this way about me. Yeah. And so I'd go to the set, and if I saw her, I'm going to, then, because I was ready to go. Yeah. I told my wife, baby, get me on the next plane, honey. Honey, honey, yeah. you're going to hurt your career. I don't care. There's no more career. I'm not going to hurt General Hospital. Get me on a plane. Twice I told her. Yeah. But she... Save me. Um, those experience, that experience, I've never experienced anybody not liking me. And I think we go through these things to learn or whatever it is, yeah. and it betters us, Yes. right? But boy, does it have to hurt that bad? Yeah, it hurts, but I appreciate that you used it. You know, that, that, <sighs> that's, yeah. that's the mark of a... Of a highly skilled artist i think is you use everything you use the, the i know what's going yeah. on right now 
You know, there was a song from uh, Hate to Hell. I forget the song that I heard, and I heard the words, and it was like parallel to what I was going through mm. with this producer. So I would listen to the song, and it would feed me. Yeah, good. You see, uh, man? Yeah. Absolutely. That's the way you do it. So what about uh, YNR? Let's get into YNR. Okay. Oh, uh, it's how, been great, man. Really great. When did you get this role? Uh, I think it was August of last year. It started in September. And, uh, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, so it's been just a few months or half a year or whatever. And so. Uh, and who is Tucker McCall? Uh, he was a character that had been oh, another? on and off. Yeah, I repla- it was again? A, again it was, yeah, this is not a new character. Yeah, again. Damn. Yeah. So um, he'd been on and off and had some history. I think he, he hadn't been on the show in nine or ten years. And they just decided to, to bring him back, uh, fold him into the storyline. And, um, uh, yeah, so he'd... And so he's got he's got a lot of tentacles and all and different relationships and um, but it's been a really terrific terrific job uh, on the, the the whole cast and the, and the crew directors producers just been fantastic and, and I'd heard this I'd heard what a great set it was and yeah, okay and Until it turned out it. it turned out it, they were right um, uh, Eric Brain's been here and mm. few, uh, quite quite a uh, I forget. I'm bad, terrible with names, but I know Michelle Stafford. I know. Mm-hmm. I know quite. Uh, so you just had Eileen on. I haven't seen. Oh, that yet. Eileen was amazing. Yeah, she's great. I didn't know what I was gonna get because mm-hmm. I really don't. We don't. And she came in here, just beautiful, vulnerable like you. Yeah. You know, we talk about vo- vulnerability. I get that a lot of actors that come in here. They're all great, but they don't want to really be vulnerable. Mm. And I don't, I'm not, this is a, I know it's called state of mind and people think it's mental health. It's, it's just talking about mm-hmm. life, mm-hmm. but I'm an open book so much that I love getting in that thing. Sure. But a lot of actors just kind of, they're about here. Yes. They don't want to, yeah, the, yeah, they don't want to get to here. Yeah. So I want to talk about something. You, you did a, this movie. Yeah. Give me the name again. A good enough day. A good enough day. Why didn't I? I thought I wrote it down. Okay, I wrote it on another one. Um, a lot of times when I people want me to see something, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Cause yes, then, I know that feeling. Because <laughs> then it's like, okay, okay. I saw this movie, A Good Enough Day. Now, either you, a percentage of you is about this movie, Mm. or you know somebody that, because it was so real. And I, hey, man, I've been around the block, and I know what that movie's about, I've mm-hmm. lived it mm-hmm. maybe three times in mm-hmm. my life. That's just why I s- sent it to you. It was not just, hey, look yeah, at me. It was I like, get you. Yeah. It was, in y- aside from how great your performance was, what I loved is how great the performance were on the phone. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen a movie mm. where the performances on the phone were so real. Right. Um, so how personal is this movie to you? I mean, is it, is it, you've been through some of this? I have, I've been through some, yeah, I, you know, I, I lost my sister, uh, when I was 15 and in a car accident and she was my dearest friend and, um, really my, you talk about, you know, Paula being your, yeah, kind of your guardian angel. Yeah, oh yeah. And uh, so Laura was her name, and uh, she really was for me. And so I was just, just destroyed by it, really. And uh, so you know, really, you 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 grieve that. I don't think you ever really stop grieving it. You just 
you don't get over it. You just kind of integrate it into yeah. who you are, right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't just like you're with your uh, uh, past. You don't just say, "Oh, that's no." I'm just gonna. Sh- no. no, it's part of you now. No. Right. And so. So the subject matter of this film is really just someone, um, the character I play is just dealing with incredible grief, you know, and I, as you could, uh, you, I'm sure you can only imagine for a few seconds what it would be like to lose one of your children. Most parents right, can't, can right. only handle a couple. Right. I, I witnessed my mother in, in real time, you know, and she found out, and uh, that kind of agony is... <laughs> Otherworldly. It's was it a drunk driving sort of thing, or no? She was just driving too fast, and going around an S curve. Yeah, she's in college. You know, you think you're invincible. Yeah, she had kind of a sports car, and uh, just going too fast, hit some gravel and flipped it. Damn. So it, it's personal in that in that sense. Obviously, I yeah, knew I knew it, it. In, in that sense. So um, so it was dealing with, but it's. Obviously, it's not those particular circumstances, no. but it is dealing with with grief and what that, how you deal with that, and um, and especially how you deal with it in relation to those, with the living. Uh, yeah, right. You know what right. I mean? Because that's what that that's right. what the story is really about. Right. It's not about what he what he lost. That's the context. Mm-mm. But it's how that y- uh, you played that shit perfectly. Oh, thank you. Perfectly, Thank you. because uh, when I was watching it, I said, "Because I and I'm not going to get into it again." Because now that during the pandemic, blah, 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 yeah. But so I didn't know really what was going on. But the way you were playing it was like somebody who's who's ready to go, mm-hmm. and how difficult it is, and and why were they all? Because was your character bad? Why were they all treating you so yeah, mean? Yeah, because I had, because my character had, because he of his grief. Get, right, he couldn't get past his grief. He could not, it, it owned him. Damn. It, it, it drove him. Um, he was stuck. I get you. He was stuck. And so forever you were, your behavior was affecting them. Exactly, and, and you're going to define yourself. And, 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 you know, what happens is, and so often you... you kind of put up a, a barrier. How can I how can I get close to anyone else if right. there, if there's a possibility of them just disappearing? Yeah. And so he pushed so this character pushed away the people in his in his life, the people that were the most important after that incident. And then you called them where the movie is and you're trying to say goodbye. Is that is that what's going? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want to get too much no, to get the exactly. plot away, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay to say. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and now who 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 were the actors on the phone, man? Well, uh, the great please tell Lisa me Lisa Fuller. Fuller um, Lisa Fuller, you're amazing. Who else? Uh, and then um, uh, uh, um, uh, Sherry Song. Sherry Song. Sherry Song. Phenomenal. Was on One Life to Live. Okay, another one. And so, the, uh, um, and then oh shoot, I'm blanking on the name of the group. I do it every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but there uh, it was. Those phone calls were, yeah, and we did those. We did, um, we did in real time. So they were not in. They they were both Sherry and Lisa were in Los Angeles, and the Los Angeles area, and we shot them. You know, this these were live conversations. You know, in in, in real time and and one take. Now they were great. Yeah. But you directed them. Yes. Okay, so that means you even made them greater. Well, I, I hope so. No, I, I, I know so. Okay. Because I watched yeah. it. Yeah. And I know how that is, where somebody can be good, but if you give them a little tweak. Well, it's like I, it's, it's, it's like I am with any actors I work with. I say, you go wherever you wish. You just go wherever you want. Uh as long as I don't, as long as you don't change the story, and I know approximately when I'm supposed to speak. Yeah, that's good. And I don't get hurt. Yeah, you can do whatever you wish. Good. And so that's what I. Uh, so kind of the way I, 
I wanted to be. I wanted to direct the way I like to be directed. Exactly. Yeah. Just go. Same. And if I if I have to say, hey, let's just tweak here and there. Same language. I'm sure that's the way you like to work. Well, yeah, because I've worked with a lot of young actors, mm-hmm. and I've taken them under my wing. Um, and I just know I I like to build them up, mm-hmm. and then start really going no nah, no. Nah, nah. And that seems to work, and uh, but I—that's what I would want with myself. Whatever I would say to them is what I've exactly. been told to me. Yeah. So, um, what's going? What, what's happening with the movie now? What happened? So we just uh, booked a distribution deal. You got it. Yeah, yeah. With Good Deed Entertainment, and I've heard are, of Good Deed. Yeah, they are. We're. It's a real feather in our cap because they're very particular, very picky wow. about about um, their film roster. So yeah, we're very flattered that they they're taking it. It's and it's in that process now. It's in a, it's a very slow like everything else in Hollywood. You know, it's a very slow process. A lot of technical yeah. legal things to sort out. Uh, but I will definitely let your audience know. Yeah. When it's available. Oh, I'll, to see. I'll promote that thing. Like oh, the, I appreciate it, man. Because I think it's a, it's special. I uh, that makes me feel. And the very way happy. you everything, man. The shot. That, that, here's here's what I thought afterwards. There's nothing wrong with that movie. Nothing. Wow. That I could see. There was nothing. And when you first started, I won't say what you do, but I'm like, okay, let's see where's he going with that. And then, like, the third time you did something, I said, okay, this dude's nailing it. (laughs) Because at first I was like, okay, what the, what? Yeah. And then I thought, no, he's nailing it. Oh, boy. Oh, Scott, okay, yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm, re- I'm, I'm very flattered no. that, that you were moved by it. Thank uh, God, because, you know, what if it wasn't good? Then I'd have to be going. You'd be bullshitting me. Yeah. 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 But well, we got to get going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, that's all I got. Oh, okay. But uh, we can just talk. Uh, yeah. If you want to ask me anything, you can ask me. I usually do this with. People, if they want to ask me some questions about anything. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about, you know, you said you're not all that keen on, on doing much acting anymore. Oh, look, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm actually loving General Hospital and just because now I'm so relaxed that I was, yeah. I've never, let me ask you a question. Because I think there's a correlation, and I ask a lot of people. Do you care what people think? Well, I, t- I tell you, um, it's it's not that I don't care what people think. I actually find if anyone says, I don't care what people think, I think they're mostly full of shit. Right, but there's percentages. Well, there's percentages. But the question really is, do you... Do you behave do in a, in such a way? Do you perform as an actor in such a way in order in order to be well received by other people? That's the difference. Uh, that's you see good, what I'm that's saying? That's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Because listen, it feels it feels great that you love the film. I'm not gonna uh, or if uh, if you liked a particular if somebody likes a performance and they say, God, you were great in that. It feels good. But what I'm not doing when I'm acting is giving a shit no. about what anyone thinks. I could not care less no. what anybody thinks about my performance as I'm doing it. And, and fact, I, I don't even care about my I don't even care about my performance when I'm doing it. Exactly. Now yeah. I was that I'm that way too with acting. Yeah. But my problem, because of the way I was maybe brought up up until that's why I've had three nervous breakdowns, is I care too much what people mm. think in that regard. Mm. The percentage is high. Mm. And so I've asked a lot of people, the people who say, you took a long beat, which means you probably, you don't really care that much as far as life. You seem like you're confident. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Well, I've always, okay, in that when you're mentally ill, mm. compounds, compounds the situation, yeah. the thoughts. Yeah. So I'd go into an audition. They're already here. Right. That's not good. Right. 
But only up until the last two years that I've been working on this and I went through, I always say you have to go through hell more than once to figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. And I went through hell more than once. And now I'm free almost. Mm. But some people are born, like my wife, my son. They don't have that same thing. Mm. And that thing will get you when you care. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you care too much, too much, yes. yeah. How it affects you, right? Is, it could be really bad. But you're able to transcend it in the moment. You're able to put it in aside. acting. Yes, yeah, yeah. But now I was not never every, able to in life. Yeah, uh -huh. up until now. Now I'm like, I don't care. Right. <laughs> well, that yeah, that's wisdom, man. And it's that's cool. One the, that's that's one of the one of the things they say the mark of someone who's uh, enlightened. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Carelessness about what other people think. Right. Right. But back to working at GH, I just want to work easy, not mm -hmm. hard now. Mm -hmm. So to me, General Hospital's family, mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it more. Before, I was like, I want to show everybody that I can do other things and be... Mm -hmm. He's a great actor. Mm -hmm. Now, I just, I'm fine where I'm at. I love this. This, to me, means everything. Well, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, you, you opened the... I mean, I was, I, I'm, I'm, I'm frightened and enjoying yeah. it at the same time. It's great. Yeah. And you're very, you got, you got very vulnerable. I love it. Yeah. And, and your movie and stuff. So, I would rather do this than acting. Mm. That's all. But mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I don't love GH and all that, right? Yeah. But this to me now, I can get almost the same. Like, you know, everybody's different. Well, feels, every actor's different. Well, talk about jazz. I mean, this is what jazz is: is a call response. Right. You listen to what the other person gives you. Right. You respond. You give something back. And you know what else? The audience that's watching. And I'll then I'll say this on camera. What Trevor did today was what we all should do, which is just whatever you're feeling, don't hide from it. Just, just say it. You know? If I'm on a talk show, I was in New York doing a talk show, I said, this is crazy. You know, I'm scared a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Because you know what? The more you say it, the easier it gets. When he was like, I'm frightened or frightened, what I wanted to say to him was what somebody said to me, Dr. Drew said to me about flying, because I got off two planes. Mm -hmm. He said, I said, what do you, he says, I got the same thing, claustrophobia. He said, keep getting on. I said, really? That's, that's what you're telling me to do. Right. But he was right. You, because you don't do it, because Trevor does not do interviews, he should do them. <laughs> Because right. it's, right. it's not yeah. that he, he's not good. He's great. You know why he's great? Because it's, he's who he is. That's it. You don't have to be more than that. That's enough. And, the, and who you are is vulnerable a lot. And who you are has feelings of, of weakness. And the more I, what I've learned is the more we, we say, I must not be weak. I must not be vulnerable. Then what do we do? We try to mask it. Alcohol, drugs, sex, gamble, whatever it is. Yeah. And we, and we hide from ourselves. Yeah. My son, and I have a 16-year-old son, and, and he came up to me just out of the blue and said, is it okay to be weak? Uh. And, I, and so I you know, really got into it with him, and I said, absolutely. You're going... It's, it's not whether you... I mean, you can't not be weak. The question is, are you willing to accept it? Are you willing yeah. to say, yeah, it's okay, I'm weak right, right. now. It's not right. that you'll never be strong. It's just that we go through yeah. the roller coaster of everything. And yeah. you must be accept accepting of your vulnerability. You must be accepting of your fear yeah. and weakness. Yeah. And that's, that's how you live a, f a fulfilling life. I f as far as I know, as far how as you I can grow. tell so far. It's how you yeah. grow. Right. And, you know, I, I was... Um, when I was reading your book, there's a, a phrase in Buddhism that is used a lot 
um, no mud, no lotus. Have you heard that phrase before? Wow, you know, the no. lotus flower. Yeah, grows from the bottom of a swamp or lake, right in the muck, <sighs> and it goes through and it blossoms on the top. And the idea is that there's no way that it would grow that way, unless it unless it was was uh, mired and was founded in that yeah that muck and, and mud. And so that's that's your story. You see what I'm saying? All you wouldn't the, be yeah. who you are without all no, that you, stuff you, that you, you had to go through. But we tend to, when we're in it, like I would, oh man, now I'm going to get into this. When, when you're in that, because I think, especially when you're manic, manic, it's God and the devil fighting each other, right? Mm. And God usually wins. Then sometimes the devil wins it. You know what happens. But when you're in that, you think there's really no way out. Mm. That pain. Mm -hmm. But like my wife would say, when I would say to her, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to be able to go through this time. Mm. She goes, honey, a hundred times you've said that. A hundred times. You've done it. Mm. But when you're in it, it's so difficult. Oh, man. I, well, I'll, I'll tell you briefly. When I was, right after I moved to L.A., 22 years old, um, I was depressed. And, um, and it got so bad, I woke up one morning and uh, I couldn't get out of bed yeah and you know the feeling yeah you, know, you talk about it like paralysis it. no it's the worst um and uh you, like you can't get out of it and I had I don't know how I had the presence of mind because you know therapy was not something anybody in my family ever did no one ever talked about it, it wasn't even conceived of that you yeah. would ever do that and I, <laughs> I don't know how but I had the presence of mind to say I need to talk to somebody and I found a therapist. Oh, you and did? I, yeah, man. And I and I uh, and I've been um, a devotee of of, um, of therapy ever since. Oh, it's great! Therapy is fantastic. Oh, absolutely. And and one of the I'm happy to say it out loud because I it really ir irritates me that that you know if you if you say, if you say to somebody, yeah, I just joined a gym. They wouldn't say, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I, I changed my diet. I'd like to eat a little healthier. Oh. Right. Oh, really? Of course. But if you say I'm going to therapy, they say, oh. Yeah. Really? What's wrong? Yeah. And yet it should not be any different than no. those things. And it's like, oh, 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 you're, you're looking out for your, for your emotional well-being? Right, right. <gasps> It's just it's it's just absurd. And this is what I, what really what I like about what you're doing here is is that you're trying to say your your emotional psychological well being is is every bit as important as anything else in your life, if not the most important thing. I think so. Yeah, well, for sure. What yeah. what what's the point if you're physically fit uh, if you're miserable? No. Yeah. I think it's changed now with the pandemic. Yeah, it's, it's not as it's not as much stigma. You see commercials now and all mm -hmm. that. Um, although every com uh, the joke I make is every commercial that's on TV, I have. <laughs> Good, you should be. Why aren't you making more money? <laughs> <laughs> if you have psoriasis, yeah, see, if you, you have, just, they should just be here twenty four hours a day shooting. You know, I la I'm, I'm in my room, man, and the a commercial comes on. I'm like, I just look up, yeah. like, okay, yeah, I got that. Check. All right, brother, listen, okay. uh, this has been just exactly like I like it. Really? Oh, good. Yeah, honest and deep. Okay, great. And, and, and just somebody who, who's frightened. I like that. Yeah. Who, got, who, who by the end of it, I don't think you're that frightened, or maybe you are. Well, no, it started to, when, it, when it started, I was definitely frightened. Yeah. But then at the... Yeah, then, you, then, then it, you, you, know, you, you, you definitely put me at ease and... Um, was able to just beautiful uh, 
So, yeah, but I, I really, you know, I, I really weighed, when you asked me to be on the show, I weighed um, my fear of this kind of thing versus uh, the importance of, of what, ah, what yeah. you're doing. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And, um, and, the, and what you're doing outweighed it. By That's what I, so. you know, when actors, I might have had so many, but there's some that don't want to do it, and I'm thinking, okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. You don't want to. But you got to get out of yourself mm -hmm. and think about the people you, the, the girl, little girls out there who you could be helping. Or, right. Or the guys out there who, who are holding things in. And so uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate you asking me on, man. I'm, I'm honored. To, Thank you, I'm man. I'm honored to have been here. State of mind. We'll see you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Check out his film. It, is, it will blow your mind. I shouldn't say that. It's incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> perfect. That's the perfect cap. It is. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Shit, man. That was good.